So the lectures I've given so far in the series are really a uh, kind of introduction to this, which is uh, the, main, the main section. So the, the, my lecture, my, uh, our two lectures today and Gavin's lectures next week are uh, covering this material. So this is an enormous sprawling paper, 128 pages, including lots of repeats and mistakes and scrap. Uh, so uh, this is material that we hope is going to appear at some reasonably near future. So I explained, uh, uh, so let me start off with some very, very elementary material. I explained last, uh, last time uh, I have this plan of taking something like this. So, so the, the picture I'm drawing is, this is a quotient singularity. For example, it could be 1 over R1A. And this could be another one, 1 over, one over S, 1B. This isn't what we're actually doing, but it could be like this. So uh, gluing them together along a coordinate axis. So for example, this could be X0, X1 up to XK, uh, for example. This one could be why not? This isn't what we're actually going to do. but uh, <clears throat> And then I just glue these two coordinates are equal. Right? And so what we're doing, we're working in a big affine space, An plus M minus 1, which is An plus Am, and then uh, with the uh, Xk equals y naught. So in other words, with the two axes. And then uh, one of my surfaces, S1, is in there. Another one is in, uh, S in, the, in there. And, and then, I, so this is, a, this is a reducible toric surface. And um, I want to talk about the possibility of, of deforming it. So in this space, uh, so maybe I'm being clumsy doing this. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should identify y naught and x naught. Maybe that will be simpler. Right. So I'm just taking, I'm just taking two spaces, an and am, and I'm and I'm gluing them together along one one of the coordinate axes, and then in there I've got a toric variety, in there I've got a toric variety. And so far, so here I have x, i, y, j equals zero for all i, j, except uh, zero, zero. <coughs> so all of, the, all of the x, i's, all the coordinates in this space times all of the coordinates in that space are zero everywhere. <coughs> And then I ask, how do I, join, how do I join them up into one irreducible variety? So the, the secret is to put, um, to take this equation, x1, y1 equals 0, and to transform it into x1, y1 equals some deformation parameter a times x0, so x0 is y0, uh, to some power n. Yeah, so that's going to take a reducible variety, a reducible surface, and deform it out into a space in, in a bigger space. One more var variable there, and what I've done is along the x naught axis, I've uh, sort of I had something that looks like this along the x naught axis. So this is transversely along the x naught axis, and I've replaced it by something which is sort of doing that when a is not zero. Right, so there's a kind of smoothing there, or I mean, maybe it's wrong to say smoothing, but at least taking something reducible and making it irreducible. And um, depending on a parameter a, and uh, and also an exponent n. So if a is just a constant. If, if, if I just put a as a constant and this n something 
greater than or equal to 2, what I've done is I had continued fractions controlling the equations between these and between these, and this guy in the middle here just becomes one more of these uh, equations. And so this is sort of, in a sense, obviously a, uh, uh, an equation, uh, a, a con uh, <coughs> one of these cyclic quotients when if I put A equals a constant, not zero, and if this exponent N is greater than or equal to two, this is, uh, this is deformed the singular variety, the, uh, the reducible variety, into a, a, sing a single cyclic quotient singularity, which is obtained in some sense by concatenating the continued fractions here with a new exponent in the middle. So let's do it in the simplest case. Simplest case is that uh, S naught, sorry, S1 equals S2 is just A2. So then I've got a reducible variety here, about the simplest variety you could ever write down, given by X naught, uh, so, sorry, X naught equals Y naught along this. <coughs> is, there's only one coordinate there, and then there's coordinate X1. So this is the X naught X1 plane, this is the Y naught Y1 plane, and I'm just replacing X1 Y1 equals A times X naught to the power of N. Right, and then if N, uh, then, you know, you can, so on, along the X, along the X naught axis, away from zero, <coughs> then uh, X naught is not zero, and so I've, uh, so this, this becomes just X1, Y1 equals some constant A, and so I've taken, I've, I've just done this, starting from X and y, X1, Y1 equals zero, now I've got X1, Y1 equals A, that's a, an ordinary parabola. So this is a kind of way of smoothing, right? And, uh, you know, there's a certain moral sense in which this works, whatever the value of N. Right, but I'm going to make the distinction that if N is greater than zero, N equals zero, and then this will be uh, uh, a deformation. Uh, it depends on the parameter N, and the parameter N governs how singular the total space of the deformation is. Right? But when N is less than zero, this is not at all a deformation, not a deformation. Right, because this is no longer a polynomial equation. So what I've really got is x1. So if um, n is minus m, less than zero, then uh, what I've really got here is x1, y1, x naught to the power of m equals a. Right, and that's still good at a general point of the axis, but it's not true that if I set a equals zero, I get back the original variety. So there's a little bit of sort of lying going on here when we say deformation. So, uh, so anyway, this was just a warm-up. So, uh, so in this case, uh, because of this exponent negative, instead of, you know, I start off like this, try to deform, and then we find, whoops, we made a mistake. Uh, what we're really doing is something like this. X, uh, uh, so the thing we're really deforming here is something like uh, a triangle, x1, y1, uh, x0 to the power of m equals 0, with one very bad multiple, multiple thing, right? So, uh, so this looks like a deformation, a deformation uh, at general point of the x naught axis, but it's not a deformation of uh, S0, S1 union S2. Okay, so, so that's just a little warning, and this will happen in our example. This isn't, this isn't our main, main example, but this is just a little preliminary exercise to understand one point of what's going on. Okay, so the main, uh, the main point, the, the, our main uh, problem 
is uh, I want to con uh, a starting point is a tent. So I'm basically repeating stuff that I said three weeks ago. As I said, the lecture course so far has been mostly introducing this material, but since there's been a gap of three weeks, I'll, uh, I'll go back to the things I said before. So I'm going to start off with a tent, T, and this is I'm drawing a picture of it like this. So there are four sheets here. So it's uh, S0, union S1, union S2, union S3. And here, S0 and S2 are both the simplest thing you can imagine. They're both A2, whereas S1 is 1 over R of 1A, and S2 is 1 over S of 1B. <coughs> right? And the first thing I'm going to want to do is take this T. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a, a kind of general statement here, not trying to be overly precise. Uh, and they're glued, they're glued along coordinate axes. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I've got this wrong. S1 is three. So S1 is this uh, one over R of one A, and it means it, there, are, there are these, this means C2, sorry, A2 divided out by this cyclic group. And then, so there's the X, original XY coordinate planes here, and something happens is to make this into a toric variety. It looks something like this. But it nevertheless has these two axes on it, which are the uh, toric strata, the orbits of the, of the big torus acting on this. And, uh, and uh, they're, they're, you know, this is the x naught coordinate axis, and this is the xk coordinate axis, <coughs> just corresponding to the original uh, axes of A2. Right? And then I want to understand how to make, to t take T, and I want to put it inside a toric variety, a regular, uh, 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 an irreducible toric variety, and I want this to smooth the uh, X, K, and Y, L axes. So this is, I want it to do this. This is this surface. Think of four sheets of paper or something like this. Then it's, I want it to do this. <coughs> and make... and make uh, the thing at the bottom. I, I want also the thing at the bottom here, S0, to become uh, an ir irreducible and to make um, S0 union S1 union S2 union S3 irreducible. Okay, so uh, let me let me let me let me try and say let me try and say this uh, again. So here uh, T uh, is has the action of the multiplicative group C star to the fourth. Right. Each of these guys is a toric surface, so each of them has uh, uh, a C star squared, two copies of C star acting on them, that makes eight copies of C star. When I glue them along the axes and I demand that the, uh, that the, uh, that the um, C star action on one side and on the other side agree along the axis, that makes C star to the fourth. Right? And so the VAB, so this guy here is called the big torus. It's a toric geometry, so VAB is supposed to be is toric, irreducible, normal toric variety 
with T action and the original SI are some strata of this toric, of the toric variety VAB. Okay, so there's a, there's a statement which I made last time, uh, and uh, so achieving this, I'm going to do this in example, so I'm not really concerned too much with the formal statement. Achieving this is uh, lifting um, these alpha and beta, is lifting alpha, beta to uh, uh, A, B with um, A congruent to alpha <coughs> mod R and B congruent to beta mod S. So I'm thinking of the alpha and the beta there as only being classes modulo R and S, whereas these are integers, and so that R, A, B, S is in SL2. Right, so, uh, so I, stated this, uh, I stated this correctly and formally last time, and I'm going to discuss it in examples in any case, so I'll understand what's happening. <coughs> Okay, so I start off with a tent, with a, a, this reducible toric variety, and then I want to put it inside a bigger four-dimensional toric variety, and I want to smooth these two axes, and I want to achieve that this bottom thing is irreducible. It won't be smooth, it'll be singular along these axes, but uh, it'll be irreducible. Okay, so then if I... If I so that's the, I should say what a diptych is. Uh, so this is a term in art history or theory of art. When you make a picture, which is like this, right? It's a picture with two panels. So our, our paper has a reference to a famous diptych, which is in the National Gallery in London, with two panels like this, so it can be closed. And this is intended to put up on an altar, so that you can pray to it, and the one side of it shows King Edward II, and the other one shows the Virgin Mary and various saints, and so on. It's all beautifully in gold, and so on. And uh, Edward II was deposed and murdered only a, only a few months after this beautiful thing was made for him. <coughs> okay. So, uh, uh, diptych. So, I'm thinking really of this as being the tent T, and this panel here as being VAB. Right, and then there's going to be another panel, VLM. So, at this stage, I have this T, and I want to do exactly the same thing but I want to do it according to different rules so that, so I, extending T to VLM, that smooths the bottom two axes. So this is exactly the same problem. So that's going to give a, a slightly different matrix here, a slightly different way of lifting this to a, to a different matrix in, uh, um, with, uh, you know, R and S and G and H and so on. In, uh, so, so, so a slightly different solution of this, and the only thing that's different is that here I'm requiring the axes here differently. Okay? So um, I want to be able to lift alpha to A and beta to B, so that this is in SL2. So that's, of course, a non-trivial condition on uh, R and B. It means that RS minus alpha beta is supposed to be divisible by A and divisible by B, uh, or something. <coughs> right, and then I want a second version of this condition. So it turns out that uh, putting, having the right coincidences here and here 
is quite restrictive and gives us a small number of solutions which can be classified completely. Right, so I, I'm sure Gavin will explain that better next week. So let me give a kind of completely baby example, completely sort of trivial example, uh, but that nevertheless shows some features of what we're doing. So uh, let me just take the condition that T is uh, x0, y1 equals x1, y0 equals 0 in uh, A4. Right? So this is a particular case of the construction. I'm in A4. I've got these coordinates x0, x1, y0, y1. And I've got this tent, which looks like this. So, so this is just four of the coordinate planes of C4. And as you can see, this is a co-dimension 2 complete intersection. So in particular, it's, Ga it's Gorenstein. Right? And then, so how, how, how can I, how many choices do I have if I want to satisfy this first, this first requirement? So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write down x1, x0, y0, y1. Right, so, so, so this is not geometric. This is, a, this is a picture of the generators of the ring. Right? And what I have here is these equations. x0, x1 equals nothing, and x1, y0 equals nothing. So I'm going to replace that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a deformation parameter here, A, and uh, an exponent here, which is going to be um, A. Right? And then here I'm going to put B and 0. So, so as a consequence of this, we're going to have an A, a 0 here, and a minus A there. So, so, so this is sort of... Uh, the, the only thing I'm saying here is I want to modify these equations so as to achieve a smoothing here, a smoothing of these two top corners. Right? And I say, well, I have to make some little choices... And the choices I'm doing is to say I want x0, y1 equals a times x1 to the power of a. Right? So this is when, uh, when a is non-zero, this has taken the singular variety x0, y1 equals zero, and it's made it non-singular along the x1 axis. Right? This is saying x0, x1, x0 y1 equals something non-zero. Right? And this, this, this guy is also non-zero along the x1 axis. So it's doing this, uh, it's taking a singular variety and making him, uh, making him smooth. And then here I'm, I'm writing down, uh, on the, at the other corner, I'm writing down x1, y0 equals b times the guy y1 to the power to the exponent zero. Okay, so I, so I explained with this trivial little example here that, uh, you know, you can't please everybody all the time. When you, if this n is negative here, then you get something which is not a deformation of the original variety. So this is going to go wrong. Uh, this is going to, I mean, this is a good deformation, right? And it's an irreducible. So this is a co-dimension 2 complete intersection in... Uh, Ambient space A6, sorry, A6, with coordinates x0, x1, y0, y1, A, B. Right? And in fact, so because this B here is, uh, you can eliminate the B. So I don't need B as a generator here, but I do need B if I want to see the toric structure of this de uh, degeneration. 
Yes? And so, you know, what happens down at this axis? What happens along the x naught axis? Well, uh, this is also, I can also think of this as being b y b x naught to the power of zero. Right? Because the, uh, since the exponent is zero, it doesn't, I can put whatever I like here. Right? And so here, also along the x naught axis, this guy here is non singular. So x1, y naught is is B, that's just, um, so if I'm standing at a point of the x naught axis, this, a non-zero non point of the x naught axis, this, this guy is non-singular. Right, so I can eliminate y1 using x naught, and I can elim el eliminate this B without using anything at all. Right, on the other hand, uh, so along the y naught axis, what happens along the y naught axis So I have to think of this as being, so, so this is the kind of exceptional thing that's happened. I want to think of this as being x naught uh, y1 equals a y naught to the, to the um, I'm sorry, y naught, I should have done the exercise. So I want to think of this, I want to replace um, in the first equation, I want to replace x1 by uh, b y0 to the minus 1 in the first, in the, uh, okay. So, uh, so, I have this nice equation here which allows me to replace y0 with a power of x1 if I want to, right? And uh, so if I want to think of this, what happens here in the neighborhood of the y naught axis, then this should be x naught times y1 equals a times b to the power of a times y naught to the power of minus a. Right? And, you know, the problem with this is not a polynomial equation. And so we should really think, we should really translate this back into a times x1 to the a. Right. So remember, when I did these, when I did, when I write these, when I take uh, a Newton polygon and I write these exponents, then the rule is I expect to be able to write x uh, i minus one x i plus one equals x i to the power of a i, and it's, this is best if the a i are greater than or equal to two. It's a bit dodgy if a one a i is uh, one or zero. If AI is negative, then it's not a polynomial equation at all, and we're not allowed to write it down like that, right? And so here, I want to think of what happens. I want to think of this as being specification of a toric variety. So it's a toric variety. It's got generators, x0, x1, y1, y0, and then the parameters a and b. The parameters a and b are also uh, toric uh, monomials, right? And I want to think of... of the, the equations, all the equations we have here as being equations that tell me successive products of successive monomials around the Newton boundary, x0, y1 is equal to x1 to, some, x1 to some power and then times the A. Right, so that's good. That's the thing that was given to us at the two top, uh, at the two top things and that's why we get this nice smoothing. So at the top, we just do you know, the thing we want to do to make these uh, nice and non-singular, right? On the other hand, if I want to interpret this as an equation here, well, here it's not too bad. Here, here you know, by chance, the x naught's not appearing here, so I get away with it. But at this point, if I want to put the y naught here as a parameter, if I want to think of this as x naught times y1 equals some power of y naught times the deformation parameter, then that power is negative, and that's really not allowed. So, so, you know, this equation here is not a polynomial equation. So I have to make this substitution. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so the same thing is going to happen in, in all of our examples. Okay, so this was, the, the thing I've done here is T into V A B. I had to choose uh, this decoration I had to choose this decoration A and 0 at the top. 
and also this uh, the deformation parameters to go with it. Right, and now I want to do T in VLM, and what I have to do is similar kind of decoration at the bottom. And the thing I'm going to do is sort of in some ways the opposite of what I did there. I'm going to write down, uh, I'm going to write down B at the X naught, at the X naught axis, and um, zero here. Right, and so here I'm going to get, so, so I fixed, uh, choose an A, right? I've made a choice, so this VAB here is the variety X naught Y, uh, y, y1 equals A, X1 to the A, X1 Y naught equals B times nothing. Right? So that's perfectly nice four-dimensional toric variety. Right? Uh, so he's, he's a co-dimension two complete intersection in here, or really he's the graph, because I can write B as a f f function, he's the graph over a hypersurface in a five space. Right? And then this guy is going to be exactly the same. So what should I write down here? I'm going to write down uh, x1 times y0 equals deformation parameter L times Y naught to the power of B and X naught Y1 equals M um, X naught to the power of zero. Have I got this exactly wrong? Uh, what do I want to do? Right. So, so uh, you know, I mean, the thing I'm doing here is exactly the same as the thing I did, did there, just with the diagram turned upside down. Right. Now, uh, so now I've got this T, and I've embedded him into VAB. So this was taking a toric variety and smoothing, uh, so taking the, the reducible toric variety and smoothing him out to a, a to an irreducible, to a normal irreducible current. Uh, variety, and here I'm doing the same VLM. And our, our main theorem is that whenever we can do that, the main theorem of this thing is whenever we have a diptych, whenever we have a diptych, I can actually build this out to a six-dimensional variety. And this is um, V, 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 L, M. This is a six-fold. Right, and this is still equivariant, and this is not a toric variety. Well, I mean, you know, in this case, it's sort of rather trivial, but uh, this is equivariant under the same big variety T, which is C, C star to the fourth. Right, so this is a six-fold, and it's, got, uh, it's not a toric variety, so it doesn't have a six-dimensional space of... Uh, I see star actions, but it's got a four-dimensional space in them. Right? So how do we make this? Well, in general, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. It's going to be, it involves lots of uh, interesting and uh, fulfilling calculations. <coughs> uh, here it's all rather trivial. So. Uh, but it's, a, it's an example of the, of the thing we're going to do in general. So let me write x naught uh, y1 equals x1 y naught equals. And I'm going to do something completely sort of childish and baby, babyish. I, I'm going to write down all the equations I had on the left-hand side, all the equations I had on the AB side, and now I'm just going to add in all the terms I had on the right-hand right side. Right, so I write down A, x1 to the A, plus, and then here I, I've got uh, x0, y0, plus m. Here I'm writing down b plus l, x0 to the b. Okay, so this is, this is the equations of, equations of the ABLM inside a now to the power 8, and the definite and the uh, all the coordinates here are x naught x one, y naught y one, 
A B L M. Okay, so the A B and the L M are, two, uh, are four independent deformation parameters. Okay, so as you can see, this uh, this variety is act in this case. In this case, this thing here is just a, uh, a six, or it's the graph of a b. Uh, sorry, it's the graph of b and m over a six of uh, all the other parameters. It's not. Okay, so, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, constructing new algebraic varieties, we certainly constructed something, but it's not exactly new. All right. Uh, however, if you, want, if you actually want to see the C star action on everything, the, uh, the C star to the fourth action on everything, uh, these, these equations are the simplest form. Okay, anyway, we're very soon going to get to uh, calculations where you can't eliminate these, these, uh, these uh, variables. Where we really, where we have genuine uh, example, uh, uh, so Gorenstein ideals of arbitrary large codimension, and um, you know, with a certain special kind of projection structure, but fair, but basically as complicated as they can be. Right, so uh, I'm not explaining this here, but as the title of our paper said, the purpose of this is it models, it provides, it provides key varieties for understanding certain Murray flips. Okay, so I'm going to again repeat something as I said three weeks ago. Um, I'm, really doing <clears throat> I'm really doing an extended example. Right, and uh, so the example is going to look like this. I'm going to do all the, all the calculations from scratch. X naught, X1, X2, uh, how, many, how many of them? X3. And I want to put here tags, 2, 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, 2. And there'll be these implicit tags here, 0 and minus 1. <clears throat> right, so, so let, me, let me explain what I'm doing. X1, X2, X3, X4. Right, so I'm starting off with T. Is, this is S0, union S1, union S2, union S3. So this guy here is X0, Y0. Right, it's A2 with coordinates X0, Y0. This S2 here is uh, A2 with coordinates uh, um, X3, <coughs> Y4. And so these, this S1 is one of these, uh, you know, it's one-seventh of something. Uh, it's one-seventh of one something, I'm not quite sure what. And this is also one-seventh of something, I'm not quite sure what. <clears throat> right, but uh, so however, the S1 has uh, coordinates, uh, so, so this is contained in A4 of X0, X1, X2, X3, and it's the irreducible toric variety with these monomials. So X1 squared is, so X0, X2 is X1 squared, X 1, X, 3 is X, 2 to the 4. Right, so the tags down the side here are determined, uh, so you know, there's some other equations here. There's also an equation X, 0, X, 4, which I'm not going to bother you. X, 0, X, 3 equals something, which uh, you can work out as a little exercise during the interval. <coughs> uh, or you can do it in your heads, probably. <coughs> So, and S3 is the same, but uh, it's got Y0, Y2 equals Y1 squared, and Y0, Y1, Y3 equals Y2 to 
equals y2 squared, then y2, y4 equals y3 cubed. Okay, and I explained last time the, the trick I'm doing here works because 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, 2. You calculate this as a continued fraction and you get 0. Okay, so there's this game, which I'm not going to repeat here explicitly, but it's implicit in the calculation. A little game here that uh, if I eliminate the 1, then this goes down to 1, 2, and, then, and so on and so forth. All of this, this is a continued fraction expansion of 0. So I've done this. I've gone around there from there, not including the first, but including everything all the way around to there. And I'm getting a continued fraction expansion of zero. Okay, so let me do this calculation, um, <clears throat> although I did it last time also. So uh, the thing I want to say is that um, I, I want to put... So in these equations of S1 and S3 themselves... These corner tags, the 2 and the 1, just don't appear at all. <clears throat> so that's part of the deformation. So I want to put a deformation parameter A there, a deformation parameter B there. Right? And I want to say that uh, our space is, uh, our space VAB is toric with lattice of monomials um, so I want it to be Z4 and it's a Z4 with X3, Y4, A and B right, so somewhere here there is a somewhere here there's a four dimensional lattice and there's a cone in it with these generators, right? So let me just do the calculation. So uh, I, want, I want to have the equation x2y4 equals x3 squared times a. Yeah? So this is just my decision at the very beginning of the calculation that I'm going to take this toric uh, reducible toric variety, and I'm going to try to smooth him by doing that, right? So to do that, I have to choose an exponent, and I have to choose a deformation variable. So that's the only thing that's happening here, right? So uh, if we already knew the variety, this would be one of its equations. However, I can say, I can rewrite this as being x2 equals x3 squared a x2 to the minus 1. Right? Just the same equation. Right? But now I'm thinking this is determining x2 as a certain monomial in this lattice. Thank you. Yes? And then who is... And then I can ask who is x1. So x1... Well, you know, x1 is... Uh, x2 to the power of 4, x3 to the minus 1. Right? So I do this guy to the fourth, and then I divide him by, then I divide him by x3. Right? So this is x3 to the power of 7 times a y4 minus 1 to the power of 4. Right? And likewise, x0 is um, uh, so it's this squared uh, divided by this. So it's uh, two sevens minus two is x3 to the twelfth, uh, ay4 to the minus one to the power of seven. Okay, so the thing I'm doing here <coughs> is I'm defining this VAB <coughs> to be the toric variety with a certain cone of monomials. Right? And the cone of monomials is in this lattice here, x3, y4, a, b, monomials generating the lattice of all monomials, and then I'm 
telling you what the cone is by telling you the generators of the cone. Right? And so here I've got so y naught equals y4 bx3 to the minus 1. Let, let me do this quickly because it's... Um, uh, right? So that corresponds to this 1 and deformation parameter b. So I've got x3, y3 is b times y4 to the power of 1. If I want to think of that as an equation for y3, it's telling me I've got y4 to the power of 1 and times this bx3 to minus 1. Right? And then y2, y1, y0. So this is y4 squared, y4 cubed, y4 to the fourth, and b x3 to the minus 1 cubed, b x3 to the minus 1 to the fifth, b x3 to the minus 1 to the seventh. Okay, so <clears throat> if you want, I'm just defining VAB to be spec of the ring, which is the, um, the ring generated by these monomials in this lattice. Right, and the relations that hold between these elements are just all the relations that hold in this lattice. So in particular, I have, if you think about it, I'm going to have relation x1, x, y0 is um, uh, a to the fourth, b to the seventh, and x0, y1 is x1 to the power of 1, a cubed, b to the fifth. Right? So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not assuming this. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, you know, proposing this as an equation. I'm deducing this from the given uh, monomials. So, for example, if you calculate x0, y1, right, you get x3 to the power of 12 minus 5, and that's the same as the x3 to the 7th there. Right, and so on. So you can, yeah, I mean, complete the calculation. It's, uh, um, you, need, you need to do it to, to understand. So the thing is, I told you, <clears throat> you know, my choice at the beginning was to deform this equation here, deform the equation x2, y4 equals 0 to this equation. But at the same, as while doing this, I get this, um, you know, the, the, the rectangle closes up nicely. It, it closes up with an equation here, the product of these two is this guy to some power times some, some monomial in A and B, and then this one here. And that x0, y1 is y0 to the power minus 1, and I've replaced the minus 1 with this x1 to the power of plus 1. This happens in all our examples. There's always a negative exponent here. There must be a negative exponent here. <coughs> okay. So, uh, uh, because I enjoy this calculation so much, I'm going to do it again. <coughs> so, now I want to take the same tent and put him inside VLM. So, this is a different toric variety, and uh, uh, he's going to have a cone of monomials like this. So I have the same stuff here that I had there, 4, 2, and there, 3, 2, 2, right? And here I'm going to choose, so this is now my arbitrary choice, I'm going to choose to put a 4 here and a new deformation parameter L. And here I'm going to put 1, and I'm going to put M. Right? And the, the result will be that I, can, I have a, a minus, minus 2 here. These are the implicit guys, the guys that will be given at the end, and a 0 there. Okay, and the reason this works is because this continued fraction is 0. So this is, again, 2, 4, 1, 2, 2, 3, 
is a continued fraction expansion of zero. Okay, so, <clears throat> so <clears throat> that, that was the original problem. That, that, this picture there, without, without this additional stuff, uh, specifies the tent. I want to deform the tent. I want to put in uh, a nice way of smoothing the bottom left-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm going to put in some exponent here and some deformation parameter. <clears throat> And in order that this will close up nicely with nice equations at the top, I need this uh, thing to happen. This uh, completely special, uh, completely specific uh, thing. So now the calculation is, so now I want VLM is toric with lattice of monomials I want him to be Z4 based by x naught, y naught, l, and m. Right? So now uh, I'm doing the same calculations as over there, and you can follow them quickly. Uh, x1, x2, x3. So the ones I know are x naught and y naught, and these deformation parameters, l and m. Right? So I can get x1 by, from this equation. There's an equation at this corner saying that this guy times this guy is uh, x naught to the fourth times L. Right? So this is, this is x naught to the fourth, then x naught to the seventh, then x naught to the twenty-fourth, and then L y naught to the minus one, L y naught to the minus one squared, <coughs> L y naught to the minus one to the seventh. Yeah. So I'm doing, for example, here, I'm doing x2 to the power of 4 divided by x1 to get x3. And now I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I want to do this calculation because it's the one thing in life I really enjoy. So here I have y naught. Uh, when I write down the exponents of y naught, this guy here is going to be y naught times something else, and it's y naught to the exponent one. Where I have these twos, it means I'm doing an arithmetic progression. So I've got an arithmetic progression which starts with y naught and then continues with y naught. So it's going one 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 one, and then because of the three here, it jumps up. This is the three is saying that something is strictly convex instead of being just convex. Right, and so here I've got m x naught to minus one. Here I've got the same thing, m x naught to minus one squared. Here I've got m x naught to the minus one cubed. Again, so this is just an arithmetic progression, starting from nothing, one, two, three. And then here, here I'm, I've got to do cube of this minus this. So this is m x naught to the minus one to the power of seven. Right? This is the cube of this minus this one. Okay? And think about this, and you get the equation x2y4 equals uh, L squared m to the 7. And x3y3 equals x2 cubed. Okay, so, so I, I finish the calculation. I know all the monomials, which are going to be the, uh, in the monomial, in the homogeneous coordinate ring of this guy, in the <coughs> toric, toric fun monomial functions on this v VLM. And then I, I must, uh, you know, if I do the product of this guy, this guy, the thing I get is, uh, ha involves no powers of y, y4. This is y4, uh, y, uh, y whatever it is, to the power of zero. Have I got this right? Uh, hey, that's good. 
This is zero. And this is minus three. Okay. So the audience is supposed to see the mistakes, not me. <coughs> right? X two Y four. You calculate it from here. X two Y four is the, co the exponents of X naught die, the exponents of Y Y two die, and it leaves L squared times m to the power of seven. Right? And then this one here, I'd really like to have y4 to the power of minus 3 there, but I'm replacing the y4 to the power of minus 3 by this x3 to the power of 3. x3 to the power of... x2 to, x2 to the power of 3. Okay, very good. So uh, I've constructed t extended to vab, and I've constructed t extended to vlm. And now how on earth am I going to complete the task to make it so I want to put both of these inside V A B L M. So how do I do this? <coughs> so this is our whole diptych trick. So at the end of last lecture, at the end of last lecture, uh, I, so, so let, let, let me just say something before I get on to that question. Let me just say something a, li a little bit about the formalism of how we do this. So the the the, the, the t is specified by these uh, one over r of one alpha and one over s of one beta. Whereas the VAB knows more than that, namely he knows this picture which I drew last time. There's a picture which is sort of like this. Right, I hope, uh, hope everybody can remember this. So, so here, I'm, what I'm thinking of here is, here's X3 and Y4, here is uh, X0 and uh, Y0. Right, so... Uh, this is the this is the picture here is in Z two, right? This is a particular basis of Z two. So uh, if you think of Z two and the kind of geometry we're doing here is the linear geometry of SL two Z. So as far as SL two Z is concerned, any basis is the same as any other basis, right? And so this is a particular basis. Then these cones are not exactly. These cones here, there's, um, there's a, a four and a two, so there's something like, there's vectors here, right? This is the x1, x2, x3, and then there's some, some lattice here. Right, so what is this picture? Right, well, you know perfectly well what these lattices are. These are, this is in Z2, I have a cone which is not basic, but which is one seventh of a one alpha, right? And here I have this cone which is also not basic, one seventh of one beta. However, when I, because I've drawn this in the plane, I've made choices about how this x two relates to x three and y four, right? So. I've got this x2 and y4, and because I've drawn it in the plane, I must have x2 times y4 equals some power of x3. Yes? And here, and so that's why I have to have a 2 and a 1 here. Yes? So, um, so you know, if I, take, if I think of these as pieces, as things I can take out, then what I've done is I've taken the pieces for the four surfaces, and I've glued them into the plane in some especially nice way. So, uh, you know, the, uh, for example, I have this continued fraction expansion of zero, and that's saying that this is a straight line. So if I continue, if I do continued fraction all the way around there, I'm getting this thing which uh, I have uh, written out somewhere. I'm getting uh, four, two, one, three, two, two equals zero. That's the statement that this 
is a subdivision of a half space. You know. And so this picture, as I explained, this picture lifts, lifts up to a certain cone, which I can easily draw. It's slightly harder to explain. Right? This is a cone in four space. In, uh, uh, sorry, this is a cone in Z4 of uh, V. So basically, this picture is drawn in the plane, and but it already takes account of the of the tags here, two and one I put at the top, right? And so having got that, I say I'm going to take this picture, and along this x3 axis, I'm going to bend upwards, right? So so here they were lying in the plane where AB is equal to one, and here I'm lifting them out out of the plane. So I'm taking this picture and I'm bending along the x3 axis and I'm bending along the y4 axis and I get this picture that I drew last time. Right? And so, uh, you know, I mean, I'm expressing this all in terms of these fun calculations using continued fractions, but actually you can do this all perfectly, perfectly systematically in uh, standard uh, language of, uh, you know, matrices, linear algebra and so on, toric geometry. So this picture here, you know, I mean, it's confusing to try to explain what's in it, but it's very simple to understand pictorially what's happening. Namely, I'm taking this picture in the plane, which is just a union of four pieces corresponding to the four toric surfaces, and I'm lifting it out of the plane to give, a, uh, uh, to give this polytope. Okay, so I'm going to explain how to construct VABLM, and this is, so... Um, So the idea is, uh, this is, um, so take the equations for uh, x2, y4, and x3, y3. So the equations going across the top here from the AB and VLM and mix them together. So uh, I think if you're a visitor to Korea, you have this experience that, you know, most foreigners who visit Korea have visited Japan before. In Japan, everything is uh, very pure and simple. If you have some food, you have one piece of food, one piece of food here. In, in uh, Korea, you have this idea of <laughs> so mix everything up, put everything in together and mix it up like anything. So this is kind of taking the equations that I have for VAB, VLM, <coughs> and making it into a bibimbap, right? And so, you know, the equation, I, I've sort of gone to some trouble to write out these equations. X2, Y4 equals, right, L squared M cubed, right? And then on the other side, I had x2, y4 is a x3 squared. So this is x3, y3 is, um, so the equation from uh, the lm side is this x2 cubed lm cubed. And the equation on the other side is uh, Y4, B. Okay. So, uh, by rationally speaking, this is all I have to do. This constructs a, this constructs now a six-fold complete intersection in eight-dimensional space, and it is by rationally equivalent to the guy we want. Right. So, so this, this guy here is, is defining uh, a, a certain co-dimension two complete intersection in A8 coordinates, X, all the coordinates we've got, X0 up to X3, Y0 up to uh, um, 
x0 is up to x3, y0 is up to y4, a, b, l, n. I'm sorry, I'm telling a lie. All of this is completely wrong. This is x2, x3, y3, y4. Right, so I need eight, I've got, I'm writing down eight coordinates here, and I'm writing down two equations in these eight coordinates. And the rest is serial and projection. Okay, so about a month ago I lectured about the, uh, the unprojection theorem. I uh, hope you at least remember there is a theorem that says I can add a new variable to a ring under some conditions and get a nice Berenstein ring. So I don't want to go that in, in detail because I'm going to do it all in calculations. And the calculations are really very, very beautiful. So here's my, here's my picture again. X0, X1, X2 x3, and here I've got y4, y3, y2, y1, y0. And so the equations that I own are there. Right? So So I say let's, uh, so I want to add x1 to these variables. Right, so this x1 will be an unprojection variable. What I'm going to do is construct a pentagram. So this is new, the new thing I'm doing. I'm taking the original cross and I'm building him up into a pentagram. And the pentagram will look like this. Right? So we do this completely systematically. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, here. I'm, what I'm writing is a pentagram. So I see this pentagram. X2, X1 is the guy we want to add. So I take the other guys in the pentagram and I follow around. Pentagram is a five-pointed star. Right? So I write these down. X3, Y4, X3, X2. And here I'm going to put minus X1. Okay, this is a five by this is going to be a five by five skew matrix. I hope, I hope it works. So uh, I want, uh, I'm looking at these equations and I'm saying I want y4x2 to be equal to this guy here minus this guy. So, so the x3a is already this term. So what I, what I want to do is write down here, have I got these right? Uh, well, I'll find out, if there's a mistake, I'll find out in the course of doing it. So. Uh, uh, L, M, and here I'm going to write uh, x2 cubed. Right, and here I'm going to put in these little minuses. So when we do this the first time, we don't care about the signs, but uh, uh, in fact, if I put the minuses there, everything's going to work out right. Okay, so... L squared m cubed. Yeah, 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 yes. It's possible that I've got these exponents a little bit funny. Anyway, anyway, let's. Uh, I'm not desperately worried about it because uh, you know the truth will out. So, 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 so I I told you my convention for writing down a skew symmetric matrix. 
I, I write down the over diagonal elements, the upper diagonal elements. I don't write down the zeros down the diagonal or the anti symmetric. So this guy here, this entry here is M12. So if I calculate Fafian 1, 2, 3, 4, as you all know, this is M12, M34, minus M13, M24, and then plus M14, M23. Right, so what is this? It's saying X. It's saying x3, y3 minus uh, that, that guy, x2 cubed, lm cubed. And then plus, uh, sorry, minus there, and then minus b, l4. b, y4. Okay, so I hope that the thing I've just written down is exactly this equation. Right? So, uh, so in this game here, there are two equations that we already know. So x3, y3 is a by4 <coughs> plus that. Right? And then similarly here, x2, y4 is... x2, y4 is... Uh, I'm going to write this term first, x3 squared a plus l squared m cubed. Yeah. And so, you know, the thing we don't, the, the thing I've written down is everything you get by cancelling this row or by cancelling this column. Yeah. And now, so those, those guys don't involve x1. <clears throat> so the new thing, the new information is x1 times uh, y4 equals x2 to the fourth, x3 to the fourth a, and then plus ly3. And x1, x3 equals, so there's a BL term there that I'm going to write down next. Uh, so where's the term, the term not, so which, I'm right, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm writing down the Paphian corresponding to killing this row. Right, so he's got x1, l3, he's got bl, and he's got y, x cubed times uh, x2. So this is x2 to the fourth, and then plus bl. Right, so that, that bit without there is the tag equation here. Right, there was a, remember there was a 4 here. So x1 times x3 is x2 to the fourth, if I set AB equals zero, and also if I set LM equals zero. He was just part of the original equation. Right? So the thing I'm learning is how to deform all of these original equations of the Toric uh, setup. Right? And I'm also getting an equation, x1 times this guy in the middle is equal to x2, y3. x2, y3 equals A, B, x3, plus um, x1 lm cubed. Okay. And so the, the picture I'm drawing here is this. Right. And now, uh, how do I go on? How am I going to continue? Now I want to add in um, I, again, I have to do this little, uh, this little thing in my head. Uh, so I want to, now I want to add y2 to this. So I, I'm going to delete y4 and add y2. So this is a systematic procedure, although I'm not explaining it systematically. Uh, this is, I'm explaining it as kind of magic. So the thing I'm going to write down now is this pentagram. You're quite possibly right. This was four and one, <coughs> two, two, three. 
Yeah? So I killed him, then I killed him, then I... Oh, you're right. I'm, uh, thank you. It's very good having a, a conspir co-conspirator in the audience. Okay, this, the thing I'm trying to write down is this. Okay, so as Gavin said, I need to add x naught. The next one to add is x naught. If I add them in the wrong order, the calculation go completely uh, banana shaped. Uh, yeah, and so the thing I'm going to do is take this set of existing set of equations, right, and eliminate y4 from it. So y4 here appears in one place in the equation. So let me write down the two equations obtained by deleting y4, right? So if I delete that row and column, or I delete that row and column, then I get two by two matrices who's uh, not involving Y4. Four by four Pfaffians not involving Y4. So exactly, so Y4 here appears in three equations. Each, each entry of the matrix appears in three Pfaffians. So let's take these two equations here. Right, that's eliminating Y4. Right, so again, I want to write down a, I want to write down a pentagram. And so what I have to do is Y3, x3, x2, x1, and then minus x0. Right? And then I'm just going to do the same, exactly what I did before. So uh, this equation here at the bottom is x2, x2, x3 equals x3 times ab, and then plus this, this, this one here. So this one is going to be x lm cubed, and I want, the thing I'm writing down here is L, right? So I'm going to write down that L, and then this term here has to be X1 M cubed, right? And then here, this one here is X1, X3 is X2 to the fourth, right? So that, that product is going to be X2 to the fourth, and then this is BL. Okay, so the, the guy I put in the middle here it has to be a factor of these two. And I'm choosing the greatest common factor. I'm taking the highest common factor of these two elements. So that by construction, this one and this one have no common factor. Right? So this, this gives, this gives uh, uh, all the equations involving x naught. Okay? So, well, you know, then, then I have to add in the, uh, the other guys I deleted one at a time, y2, y1, y, y0, at the same time as killing, uh, uh, the, you know, killing these guys in some order. In this case, killing, first I kill the y4, then I kill the x3. And so there's a, a rule for how, what order to do this, adding the variables and killing the variables, right? So, uh, you know, this calculation is worked out in detail in the paper that I referred to. So, uh, um, I have a copy of the extended example from it here. Anybody wants to look at it during the interval? So, uh, so you know, the, the, this example, when it's constructed, will have will be a Gorenstein ring in co-dimension six or seven or something. And he's obtained by this procedure that we call serial unprojection. So, in the literature now, there are sort of six, there are four, four or five papers on parallel unprojection. Parallel unprojection is when you take centers that exist in advance and that are independent in advance and you unproject them and you can do them in any order. Parallel, on the other uh, the serial, the idea of serial unprojection is that each unprojection builds the, the variety, the data for the subsequent unprojection. So you can only do them in one order. Right? So, you know, I mean, there's, uh, once you've thought of it, there's nothing especially clever or difficult about this. This is uh, very, very beautiful and very uh, e easy to do. So, what, the thing I've told you here is not a complete proof. So, uh, Gavin will explain something about the proof uh, in next week's lectures. And the rest is, uh, you can, so the, the paper I mentioned at the front here, this is the first time we have a, a correct and complete proof of the, uh, the main theorem, at least in the main case, right? And it's 